Everybody, it's Tyler here at Chessie Chance. We're checking in with 5940. Brad, number 15, by the way, in the FRC Top 25. This team won regional win at Monterey Bay. Also division finalists. And Kiri, you were the number one C as well, too. So congratulations on an awesome season. Brad has been a team that continues to just rise to the top year after year right now. Take a look at their robot. Just love overall everything this team has to have. I love their transfer as they go through. Uh, some of the footage we've taken that has been absolutely amazing. So we can't wait to learn more about Brad and what they have to bring here in this season coming up on Behind the Bumpers. This video on fun was brought to you by viewers like you and also by the following. Discover how you can graduate debt-free at Kettering University with Kettering's amazing co-op employment programs. Those accepted into Kettering University can apply for a robotic scholarship providing up to an additional $5,000 a year in tuition assistance. Head on over to kettering.edu slash first to learn more, schedule a visit, or apply. Fun is continuing to grow and looking for new ad partners for the 2024 season. If your organization has a positive message to spread to our over 250,000 unique viewers, go to firstupdatesnow.com slash contact to get more information. Cheyenne, let's start talking about, I think, one of the big show pieces of your robot, and that's your elevator system. Talking about what's gone into it uh, and just how it works overall. Yeah, so we're running a two-stage elevator here with a, a overextending carriage, which means our carriage extends past the top of our second stage. And uh, actually, something cool we do is we run our d Dyneema internally, which means all the Dyneema is inside the tubes, which is really nice because what it allows us to do is avoid having our Dyneema get caught on any of the other parts of our robot. And it just allows us to have a smoother elevator. So it's one of the things right. I know that I've seen in robots that it just the, the tensile strength on it or that it's just so strong that you don't have to really worry about when your elevator comes out, it doesn't have to break or anything. Yeah. Have you had any breaks during the we've season? Never, we've never had our Dyneema snap, which is one of the best things about using it. Um, and can we uh, showcase a little more about your elevator and talk about your arm as well, too? It'd be great. Yeah, so our arm just runs on uh, this extends. It just runs on this single pivot right here, and we run all our cables through it. So that means we don't have to use any cable chain. Um, and it, and we pivot our arm with these belts right here, and it runs to this belt box right here. Um, yeah. Can we show up a couple different uh, positions and narrate with me kind of what that looks like on your robot? Yeah. All right. This is placing for mid place. All right. That's place. Good to high. That's placed high. Uh, and then go low. When you were looking at the season, uh, one of the things that Brett is really impressed with is just how quick your scoring process is for things. Uh, when you were designing uh, this from your robot, what thought process went into just wanting to get your cycle times down so quickly? Yeah, I think one of the first things we realized during the season is we actually went through a couple of different bots. So we started with an alpha bot, which was just an elevator we took that we had built earlier in the off season, and we strapped it onto a bot at an angle, and we just had it extend up. And we saw that one of the most important things was placement speed. So one of the things we really tried to do in our next iterations is optimize speed. So we went, we've gone through a couple of different iterations. We started with a, a bit of a slower um, gear ratio, and then as the season progressed, we moved up um, until we got to a speed we felt comfortable with. Let's keep talking about more scoring processes on your robot here. Trevor, talk to me about the uh, intake uh, that you're doing uh, as well. I love, I love wide intakes with the robots, but really that process and uh, uh, bringing it in and that transfer through has looked so cool on your robot. I'd love to hear more about it. Yeah, so to feed uh, our gripper up here, we designed this full width uh, cubing intake on the back. It's also a cone intake, which I'll talk about in a second with this roller. Uh, so the reason why we put it on the back, like we've seen a lot of teams with uh, that intake and score on the same side with their elevator. Uh, we did this because we thought in auto it would be really advantageous to be able to not turn, and that's helped us a lot. Um, so for uh, cube intaking, can you go ahead and show that, Krish? Here we go. So it's uh, just a normal flip down intake. Uh, we use mechanisms to vector against this plate uh, to center the cube, and yeah, that's cube intake. It's pretty simple. Uh, and then for cone intaking, uh, can I just hold that? Thank you. Uh, it's kind of a funny idea, but uh, if you look at the cone here when we're picking it up, because we pick it up tipped with the tip facing away from us, when it rotates with the arm, it's not actually facing the way the gripper wants it, because this would rotate it so it's placing upside down. So what we do to avoid another doff is when we take this in, uh, this pivot is floating and it's tensioned up by the surgical tubing uh, right, oh, <laughs> right here. So can you hold this for me, please? 
So once this starts intaking, the force of the roller motor starts pulling it until it rotates down. And it pushes it to an angle that this can take. So if we go and show the whole handoff sequence. I love that smooth transition process it goes through. And, and really the thought process behind orienting the cones anyway as well. Uh, when you were uh, looking uh, from your, your intake wise into that transfer, I mean, we see so many teams that aren't maybe doing as many processes to get there. Why was this the best fit for bread? Um, well, for having this wide intake was really important just so we could get cubes. Um, and it, was, it allowed us to create an end effector that was just optimized for grabbing off the single and double substations. Uh, and also with the cones too, uh, it's able to vector this entire width, which is really powerful. So our driver can just drive at it and it doesn't have to be nearly as precise with some other end effector designs we've seen. You guys have one of the probably beefiest forks uh, out there in, in first as well too. Talking about uh, uh, yeah. what's going on, I'd love to hear more about the uh, springs as well too and how you're utilizing yeah. that for so, your uh, um, climb. This, this climber is really interesting because to lift ourselves onto the charge station, it both translates and rotates. So as you can see with these CF springs, and this, uh, this two by one, it does uh, move up, but it also does rotate. So what happens is down here, uh, there's some cams that uh, when we rotate this gearbox, it releases it, and these CS springs will just pull this out, and it'll flop out onto the charge station. And then when we start pulling down, it'll start lifting us up. But because it's not pulling from directly under this, it's actually pulling slightly offset, what it'll do is it lifts the front of our robot first, and then it'll pivot. And we did this because we thought that if we just lifted vertically or we just rotated, it wouldn't be enough for us to get off the ground and be able to hold that until the match ended, like five seconds after. And we were able to do that with one motor with this whole cam system and that string. And the reason why it just does this, uh, like lifts the robot up first, is just because it requires less force. Well, that, can we, is this able to come down at all? Can we showcase yeah. that? Go ahead and deploy it, Kush. Yeah, and just winch it in. Maybe I can like hold it out. Just go, go ahead. Oh, all right. No, yeah, and we I'm saw that safe. process come come through on there as well. That's really cool uh, to see, and I, I love just the ingenuity that's gone into this. It's uh, just overall, like I said, really well packaged machine, and great to see on the field. Let's talk about the other aspect from a software side, Chris, and talk to me about what's gone into. What are some may maybe things you really want to highlight from a software end on your robot? So we've tried to automate almost every conceivable aspect of this game, and really that starts with our placement. Um, so the way that our auto place works is we have a pose estimate that's influenced by a bunch of you know, sources of data. One of them is wheel odometry, but wheel odometry by itself wasn't accurate enough. So we combine that with April tag um, vision estimates. So we have three cameras which are running, uh, which are plugged into an Orange Pi 5 running April tag detection software on them, uh, two on the sides and one on the front. And that's able to give us a very accurate robot pose, even from about like 15 feet from the, from the tags. Um, and that's worked very well for our autos, for cube placement. Uh, but while we were trying to get the auto place to work, we realized that we need something more accurate for cones. So we also included this limelight on the front, uh, which is looking for the retroreflective tape. And uh, we'll use the April tag uh, vision estimate to get most of the way there. And then the limelight will do a little bit of fine tuning at the end. Um, and our auto place has just enabled us to have very uh, fast and consistent cycles. Uh, there's no you know, manual uh, factors that could be influencing any longer cycles. And uh, what's actually cool about our auto place is you know, I'm the operator, and all I have to do is select the, game le or the level that I want to score at and the game piece that we have. And the robot, using its current pose estimate, will uh, figure out the closest uh, node with, which doesn't have a game piece scored on it. It'll automatically go there, and it'll automatically score. So, so you're also object detecting if one's been scored as well, too? Yeah, so we're looking to see if, like, for example, for a cone, we're going to see if there's a, the retroreflective tape is blocked. That's really cool. Looking at into the uh, crescendo season coming up with uh, updates to the April tags and that sort of thing as well, too. How are you looking to approach uh, next year? with more of an April take, uh, more of solely April take centric, I guess, from a vision. Yeah, so I think uh, from a vision standpoint for this new game, we're just looking to have more cameras and more computing power. Sure. So uh, we're going to add a second Orange Pi. Uh, we're actually doing that on our off-season robot as a little bit of beta testing. And uh, we're probably going to add another camera. And uh, so then there will be two cameras uh, per coprocessor instead of three per one. Um, so hopefully we should just have more accurate uh, April tag detection from that.
Well, in the sea of California teams out there, Brett has really become a powerhouse in California and in first as well, too. So thank you so much for telling us more about your team and your robot. Congratulations on a great season. We can't wait to see what you bring in Crescendo. Thanks a lot. Thank you. This video on fun was brought to you by viewers like you and also by the following. Discover how you can graduate debt-free at Kettering University with Kettering's amazing co-op employment programs. Those accepted into Kettering University can apply for a robotic scholarship providing up to an additional $5,000 a year in tuition assistance. Head on over to kettering.edu slash first to learn more, schedule a visit, or apply. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and ring the bell to stay up to date on our new videos. Keep the conversation going and provide your input to our content. Most live shows can be found on the First Updates Now YouTube channel, live competitions at twitch.tv slash firstupdatesnow, and join our Discord at discord.gg slash firstupdatesnow. Check our other social offerings on TikTok, Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter.